Haruji and Graham Wakefield. Hi, um, I am Haruji, one of artists behind the Artificial Nature Project. I have a background in fine arts, media arts, and 3D computer graphics. Graham is the other half of Artificial Nature, has a background in philosophy, <coughs> music, and computer science. We are based in South Korea and Toronto, Canada. What you are looking at is a selection of videos from our mixed reality artificial nature installations. We started to work together on the artificial nature project and also in VR since 2007. So we are in the second generation of creative VR research. Artificial nature is an alien universe. It's an immersive ecosystem experience as a mixed reality and a man-made nature. It is built by human artists but to live by its own right. Why an alien universe? It comes from an inherent curiosity and aesthetic survival instinct to create the possible world as an expansion of the real. Consider that imaginable is greater than the known, yet the real is greater and weirder than the imaginable. That is why we are fascinated by the incomparably larger, alien, unknown, virtual of the real. We create artificial natures based upon complex adaptive systems theory and many other natural, system, uh, natural systems research, which had a strong impact upon us in understanding to how nature works, especially the connections, organizations, and structures that exist beyond the human scale. What is the weirdness in our project? Mainly, we displace the human from the center, understanding us as just one example of all possible intellectual lives. This becomes our uniqueness, beauty, and dilemma too. We want to invite you into a world where you become part of the system as a component, but not as the main subject. So you can influence the world around you, but you can't control it. The species and the world have the possibility to grow, adapt, and evolve to an environment in part shaped by you. Perhaps you influence currents of the wind. Perhaps you are eaten by them. Perhaps you carry them from one ecological niche to another. But sometimes you destroy them with your shadow. Still, this is another higher dimensional world, self-regulated and near living open-ended system surrounding, surrounding you as an alien universe. We understand the virtual as an expansion of our physical world. It is an environment that came from us, but goes beyond us, and it, it will continue to shape us in a feedback loop. Uh, so this is our code, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about code. Uh, we went pretty deep into that, uh, partly because we're committed to a world with great depth of kind, uh, in which everything that you see has got some kind of continuous ontological function. Uh, so for example, the particles are not uh, game engine effects. They're, we've got hundreds of thousands and they're never being created or destroyed. You can visually follow one of them as they're transformed, digested by one creature and then another, shriveling and changing color. Uh, we model the fluid with matter of Stokes equations, we do evolution and mutation, and that's part of viability constraints and so on. Uh, well, we have to do all this at 90 frames a second, obviously. Uh, so we're quoting lots of C++ for efficiency. Uh, some of what we're doing, I'm sharing um, uh, in open source libraries, particularly for Max and SP, that there's objects for Oculus and Vive. Uh, but sometimes this isn't enough. The creativity of life isn't some predefined problem amenable to ahead of time optimization. And so every time an organism is born, we generate a new program for it, based on its unique genome, and compile this to native machine code for speed on hundreds every minute. This echoes how the philosopher Bergson distinguished life and matter, where matter's tendency is to homogeneity and makes it predictable. Life is what differs from itself, continually, continually rewriting itself into new qualities. By giving life to mixed realities, we're anticipating futures more perverse, pervasively immersed in computation, which we hope can be resonantly open-ended, and in which humans are deeply present, but not open, overly privileged. Yeah. 
So finally, we thought it would be fun to end with just a little anecdote. Um, this is about a work that Emma's trying to do. I had a Japanese Buddhist monk on the bridge of the Allosphere, and he told me when he came back that when he was six years old, he had um, eaten a poison fish, and he was in a coma for six months. He said that the visions that he had uh, when he was in uh, the coma were uh, what he saw when he was on the atmosphere, and in particular, fluid space uh, reminded him of the floating orbs that he saw, and so when he came into the atmosphere to meditate, he brought another Buddhist monk friend, and they sat on the bridge, and they meditated in uh, fluid space for about an hour. <laughs>